In today's video, I'm going to show you how to flap the right way, or at least the fastest way that I know of in Photoshop. Welcome back to Pencils and Stories. My name is Enrique and I make and teach comics. If you want to make your own comics, then you're in the right place. Subscribe to this YouTube channel for weekly videos. So what is flatting? Flatting is the process of laying in the basic colors on your page and in a way that you can easily select all of the colors and it makes it really easy to shade and to render because you can easily select colors and it's just oftentimes just a few clicks and then you have the entire character selected. And the beauty of having a flatting layer in the method that I'm gonna teach you today is that you only need one layer. So it's really easy to have these color shapes and then being able to select a bunch of them so you can either put adjustments on them or change up the color real fast, fill them with another color. I use a lot of adjustments in my color to change up the hue, the temperature, uh, you know, make colors more harmonious and that kind of stuff. That's a whole video in and of itself. Today we're going to talk just about flatting and I'm going to show you a technique in Photoshop. I think it also works in most other programs. I personally have trouble using it in Procreate. It's more geared towards painting and thus it's more geared towards having more feathered edges and working with transparency and stuff. I don't get too many good results. That's probably also because of the way I do my line art. My line art is very uh, rough. There's a lot of little pixels in it that are transparent. And then I also don't close up my lines very well because Procreate actually has a flatting uh, option that you can use if you're a comic artist. Also why I don't use flatting tools because there's flatting tools that automate the flatting process for you. But because I have really pixelated line art, if you zoom in close and because I don't close up my lines, those like the cleanup takes forever for me. So I don't use those tools, uh, but it might be something for you to check out. I might do a video on them. Uh, leave it in the comments below if you want to see me use any of those tools. Um, but for right now, this is this is a very neat, very fast way to flat in Photoshop. Let's dive in. So I've chosen page 90 of Recollection City because it has both simple panels and very complex panels. For example, the first panel with all of the books. So let's make a layer for our flats. And this is one layer. And we do all our flat color shapes on one layer and the beauty of flatting is that you only need one layer because all the shapes will be nicely able to be selected and we actually don't need all of the layers for skin tones and clothing and backgrounds and you, with flats you don't need that so let's make a flat layer and first we're going to lay in the color of the panels themselves i usually hide the line art for that um also, my panel borders will have the balloons laid on top of it, but that's in actuality, that's a mask. Uh, so my uh, panel borders are actually not cut up. Uh, this is um, this is just what it looks like. You can see if I go to my panel borders layer and I disable the layer mask, um, that it's still intact, like it's still all black lines. Um, but. Uh, because I have overlapping balloons, I actually need to mask that off. But that's a completely different topic in and of itself. But I will select and make sure that your selections are always kind of in the middle of the line. Um, because then the color will, will slide nicely under your line art or under your uh, panel borders. And you won't see any awkward white lines. For example, I did that wrong there. You won't see any awkwardness. I actually have a Photoshop action, but that's also in another entirely different video. So it's going to be a masterclass on my Gumroad and it's going to be free for people who get my course this fall that I'm going to launch on Kickstarter on how to start your own comic. It will go through the entire pre-production process of comics from story to design to making template pages to coming up with cool characters and coming up with ideas and uh, everything right up to making your own pages. Um, so that's coming up and there's going to be a few new videos on my Gumroad store and people who get my course actually get those for free. So um, that's Photoshop actions. It's actually super easy. I just select the panels and you know, it expands and then 
um, the selection expands and I can fill it up easily, but you can do this by hand just as I just showed you. You know, select all the panels, click with a nice starter color, and then you might want to lock this layer. And that's a little checker box, like under layers normal, you see lock. And the checker box icon is what I just clicked. And then you see this little padlock. And that means that you cannot paint or go outside. Need a darker color. Like as you can see, I will not um, influence the gutters or whatever's outside of the panels in any way. So that's really nice. And you want that uh, for your flats. Let's bring up the line art again. And let's get started. The whole idea behind this is to use the lasso tool and it's very important to have anti-alias switched off and the feathering is set to zero pixels. So for the fill tool, what you want is have like mode normal opacity 100%, which means that it's going to have no transparency. You want to have the tolerance to zero because tolerance uh, means that it will start uh, treating colors that are close together as the same, kind of as the same color. Uh, so if you have a pink and a red tone, you actually only want to change up the pink tone. Um, you know, you want to have this to zero because if it's set to like 50, it might start to lump like pink and red and stuff together. And if you change up a red color, it might actually change up like pinks and, and purples as well. Uh, Anti-alias needs to be switched off because we want to have I always call it like pixelated outlines, um, like my lasso tools, anti-alias switched off as well. Um, this is not a good color. Like as you can see, it has like super pixelated ragged lines and we want that. That's a good thing because that means that when we use our lasso tool, it's super easily selectable. As you can see, like here the marching ants, it's a perfect selection. Uh, the colors are, are really well separated, which is super nice. So anti-alias off. So we get these nice pixelated lines and continuous can be switched on or off. It depends on what you want to do. It's why I made two shapes here. Um, let's say you want to change up the color of one of these. They're the same color. And if you have continuous switched off, they will both be affected. They will both be turned yellow. But if I only want to have like one shape and it's a separate shape from the other one, if I switch on continuous, it will only affect one shape because the color shape stops here. So it will not go outside. It will not change anything else. If you want to change, for example, the skin tone of a certain character, or you know, you want their, their coat to be a different color, um, and you want to do that for the whole page, then obviously continue get switched off is going to be amazing um, because then the skin tone or the coat uh, in every single panel is going to be uh, changed. But if you have one panel, for example, and there um, it's suddenly nighttime, uh, so people's skin tones and, and clothes start to look differently, then you want to switch off, uh, switch on continue guess because you only want to affect the shapes in that panel. Um, but you can use selections as well. It's multiple ways to do that, but, uh, this needs to be switched on or off depending on what you want. Um, but for the purposes of flatting, let's keep it on because that's, this, uh, the safest option. So let's first dive into a little bit, like one of the easiest panels. Um, I think it's this one. Yes. I think that's the best one. Um, so what a lot of people will do. They will just start blocking in, you know, like so. Or what they will do, you actually need a brush for that. That's more pixelated. For example, you can do it with a pencil tool because the pencil tool is very pixelated. As you can see, it's, it's a pixelated. And this is what we want when we flat because the magic wand tool will really like this. <laughs> it can select exact shapes, but if you use something that's very smooth and anti-alias like this, you will see all these gradients in here. You will see all these kinds of like 
they will blend more into the background and then when you do a magic wand you get something like this which we don't want because is this part of it or isn't it you know and that's it's confusing and it's awkward and it it doesn't make for easy selection which is the point when you're flatting you want to make very easy selection also it's very great if you want to work towards what for example what i do is working towards a more flat style because that's that's uh, quicker obviously because you don't have to shade as much I used to over render everything and now I'm leaning more and more towards having more flat layers and then doing some basic lighting and then having my flat layers the colors on there be so harmonious and so nice looking together that the page will look good on its own without too much rendering that's actually very hard to do um, but uh, but yeah, then especially you want to have full control over all the color shapes on your on your page. But yeah, just as a uh, as a point, make sure that your shapes look like this. So if you would actually flat um, by doing painting, then definitely use a pencil tool instead of the uh, you know. And then you can do things like this, for example, where you, where you uh, go alongside the outline of the character let's say I just want to do just his face like you normally would do probably the entire character and then do this because that's easy and see what happens uh, that's an, that's the anti-alias like brush that uh, we used even here it's like it's awkward and, and nasty so we're not gonna use any brushes or painting in every color we have we're gonna use a lasso tool we're gonna use it efficiently the key point of this flatting method is flat big shapes first and then go into detail. And there's a very nice way of going faster and faster the more detailed you get. I use a combination of the regular lasso tool and the polygon lasso tool. Uh, you can easily switch between the two uh, by going pressing alt. Uh, you can switch bet between these two. So you press alt and then you can drag a straight line and because this is a straight line it's very easy to do it like that and then you can either let go of alt and then you know uh, drag your lasso tool and it will become like this or you can use the polygon and then drag and it will turn into this lasso tool on its own so that's really nice uh key point zooming in is nice <laughs> another thing i chose to have characters with dark hair that have black um, hair just for economical reasons so Max and Ivory both have dark hair um, for the same this is all for the same reason um, as why I don't have like I don't give p uh, my characters irises uh, because it's all extra work so I chose not to do that that's a little complicated. It gets a little complicated with uh, a shape like this because I still want to have like his jawline um, stand out from the hair behind his head. So um, there, that's where I, I use I invert my line art actually, and I, um, you know, I erase <laughs> those parts when I do the line art. Right, and then, as you see, I go outside the panel border, and that's totally fine because this. Is set to lock you see this little lock icon here it's locked and that means that nothing can you know nothing can come outside of that shape so it doesn't really matter that I go outside the lines and that's another beautiful thing from this flatting method that you will soon see now we have our first shape and you can see that I flat all the colors on the same layer because it doesn't matter that's also a very beautiful thing about having a flatting uh, having a flat layer is that you don't need multiple layers and then getting confused and everything you can just use one layer and then with the magic wand tool and because this is all anti-aliased which just means super pixelated um it's super easy to select it will it will do perfect selections and that's what we want already so what we could do is give the background what I would ask myself at this point is what are the big shapes and how can I separate as many shapes from each other as possible in one go 
So one thing you could do um, is separate his his face and his neck, like his, his skin, uh, from his clothing. That's one option um, because his face is a big shape, his clothing is a big shape. Um, what you could also do is have his head and then, you know, part of this part of his clothing, like on his chest, and then have, um, have his coat um, not selected. Doesn't really matter, but you wanna you wanna get to the big shapes uh, first. Uh, but let's just let's just focus on um, on his head. And here, this is the beauty because we have already separated these two shapes, like his face and the background. They are two different colors. What I could do is just do this, and then only when it's still the same color, so his neck and the scarf are the same color we need to separate those that's the only place i'm going a little faster normally it would be more careful but this is for demo purposes this is the only part when the same color is present for two different kind of shapes and you want to you want to have those two different colors that's all that matters so that's all you need to focus on this has already been taken care of boom you see, it did not, because this is so nicely separated, you can't just fill it in. And as we can see, if we switch off the line art, everything is still super neat. I'm not sure what that pixel is doing there, but then, even then you can just do this. Boop, and it's gone. Uh, but you see how neat this is? Let's put the line art back. Like what else could you like separate that would make it super easy? So what I would do now is I would separate the coat from the rest of the clothing. So I would separate the scarf and the vest from the uh, the coat. And it's always easier to pick the bigger shapes first. And in this case, because um, the pink will be the last color left, uh, I would actually choose to just leave the coat pink. All we have to do is um, separate one more shape, which is the scarf. Let's see how easy that is. Again, this all doesn't matter as long as these two shapes, the scarf and the vest, are separated neatly and the rest does not matter. Really nice color scheme there. As you see, I wasn't too neat uh, selecting. Like this would not happen if you select. <laughs> if you select perfectly, but you don't want to see me like being all meticulous and everything because you don't need to. The concept is clear. So you'd have still have to, you know, separate these out. But those are details. And it's easier for a lot of people to just pick random colors, so you don't have to think about that. Um, if I would have. A giant scene where the character is wearing the same clothes I would definitely have um, a, a palette that I can use and just color pick so you could do that and then flat the background in whatever color you want um, you could also do a quick color sketch uh, at the beginning and pick your colors from that uh, that's all fine I actually do not flat my my pages anymore myself because I send it to a person who flats it for me because flatting is basically just laying in color blocks. There's not much uh, vision required in terms of color schemes or because I could change the colors up myself pretty easily. Uh, so I don't, you know, it doesn't matter if I do it or someone else. So I actually hire a person, I pay them uh, to flat my pages for me. It's like a, uh, one fee per page, uh, depends on the complexity. And then they send it back in a few days, like it's a Photoshop file and they will flat it in this way. So it's super neat, super anti-aliased. Put in that and then all you have to do, select the tongue, doesn't matter how, because it's all separated again. I don't know, it's a weird color for a tongue. <laughs> oh, whatever. Damn. Character flat it. 
I just noticed everything is brown because I had continued to switch off to, sh to show you. <laughs> it doesn't actually matter, but because we already have a character with a skin tone like this, let's pick a different color so we don't accidentally mess up his skin that we already flattened. So what you want to do is separate shapes apart from each other as economically as possible. And usually that means starting with the bigger shapes. So obviously the bookcase is a very, very dominant shape, but it's overlapped by this table and on this table are other things. So what you could do is first focus on either separating the bookcase from the floor, which means you would go like this. Yeah, you get what I mean, right? That's not very neat. <laughs> it's not very neat. Uh, but you would select this entire shape, you know, uh, and that's it. Like you would have a big shape that's uh, including the table. And then you can go in a level deeper and separate the table from the bookcase. And that's another shape. And then it would be super easy and fast uh, to go in and actually separate this, separate this, you know, and you would have two shapes and then you can even, you know, uh, and then go another level, uh, running out of colors and then separate this and then maybe, you know, separate this if you want to give that book a different color. Um, and then you'd have the bookcase and then the entire table would be flattened like pretty, um, pretty fast. Or you can separate the bookcase from the table and kind of mash the table together with the ground shape, which would make your first level be this. And then add these little pieces. And you have separated the bookcase and then you can go in the second level to separate the table from the floor. Then all you would have to do is this. But for clarity, let's make it this. Um, you know, and then you have separated the table from the bookcase from the floor. And then I'd probably go in into this background first. So I'd separate max. Like, and this is, this is nice because those are smaller shapes against a larger kind of like thing. Um, and you can already half separate this uh, plant here out. So then to separate it from the ground, then all you have to do is this. I will maybe go as far as to flat everything that is background, far background, like the furthest way back without the floor. Boom. Now you have already like separated big shapes from the background, for example, here and here and here. So these shapes become instantly easier to flat because you can la 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 be very sloppy here and only have to separate the lower part of the table from the floor. Again, being sloppy here. And then again, you see, I click on the green, not on the blue because it will be blue. Like I click on the green and bam, same goes for max. This, I can just skip all of this. All I have to do is separate like his hand, his hat and his legs. And a little tip of his fingers. That's it. That's all I need to separate. Bam. 
Already this looks less overwhelming, right? Uh, and then I would probably do this because it's easy. You know, always start from shapes where you already partly have um, separated something out. Make it a little bit bigger shape because that's just easier. And then you see here, this is so nice. All you have to do is this, like all you still have to flat here. All you still have to flat here, like have to select is this little tiny piece because this is the only part where the two shapes are, have, still have the same color. So boop, you know, whoop, and it's over. Um, you know, I will go in with this shape next. Again, this all does matter. Should have done that with an actual lasso tool. <laughs> Again, you could use, because this is all straight, it's super easy. Bam. And then you can go in, what you could even do is separate the background again, because there's a lot of shapes again, touching here. It becomes easier to, s to select the doors, for example. Because you only have to separate the character from the door. I forgot a little bit of the floor. Like, you could even just go character, like that. You see, and it's already, like, you've broken it up so much now that it all becomes so much easier to flat. And then, as a last tip, these bookcases. Like, it looks super complicated. Um, it actually isn't uh, too complicated. Because these are all, like, like a lot of people think, like, I have to flat every single book. Um, the shapes first. And because the way I draw, uh, they're, they're very connected shapes. And you can just use the straight, like, the polygon a lot. You know, it's a little bit of work, but separate out all these shapes. You know, and then so on, so on. Um, and then... What I usually do with things like this is I will have some variety. You can, and then with this, just make sure you separate a lot of those books. It's kind of the same principle. Like say you wanna you wanna give them, um, you wanna give them different colors. And then grab your your magic wand. And then this is a nice trick too. Uh, if I press Alt. Um, and then go to the blue, and I click the blue, it will deselect all of the blue out of that selection. That's the beauty of having a flat layer with these colors. Like, I could just go in and, you know, select that out. And then I go to image adjustments, and I can play around with, you know, different colored books. You know, change up the hue a little bit. And now they're just selectable, you know. And then select a few more. Again. Go to image adjustments. Use saturation. Mm, let's make them pink. Ta-da! So this is an easy way to quickly get some variety in these shapes. That was it for this week's video. If it was helpful or if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I would love to hear about it. If you want to know more about my upcoming course that I mentioned in this video, go to the link in the description and you can sign up to be notified the moment my course launches. If this video was helpful, leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. For now, I want to thank you so much for watching. Go out and make some comics.